explained this a number of times. The Babylon motif goes back to the days of Semiramis and Nimrod with the Tower of Babel. Man trying to reach God through religious means, deifying himself, combined with his technology and politics. It goes back to Nimrod and Semiramis. That is the Babylonian or the Babylon motif. It has an anticlimax in the Old Testament with the Babylonian Empire that Jeremiah and uh, Joel and Isaiah railed against with such prophecies that are reiterated in the New Testament in the book of Revelation, fallen, fallen is Babylon. That is the Old Testament anticlimax. But in the New Testament, Peter writes, writing from almost certainly Rome, she who was in Babylon greets you associating Rome with Babylon, and the early believers would have understood the woman on seven hills, Babylon the Great, as being pagan Rome. But let's look ahead, what is the mystery? A mystery is something that is going to be revealed. A mystery is something that God will reveal at the appropriate time in the appropriate way to his people. It is already, however, largely revealed in Scripture. The first thing we have to understand about Babylon is the following. I put it this way. I'm speaking to you from near London, England. In the days of Arthur Conan Doyle, who wrote the books about Sherlock Holmes, Scotland Yard was located on a little alleyway between two buildings near the Houses of Parliament on Whitehall in London on the banks of the Thames, called Scotland Yard. That was the name of the street. Actually, it was just an alleyway. However, about a half mile away on Victoria Street is a large building next to the Home Office. That is called Scotland Yard. Same institution, but it's no longer located on Scotland Yard. The name of the original location becomes the name of the institution the headquarters of the Metropolitan Police in Britain. Or another way to look at it, um, in New York City, the original New York Stock Exchange was on Wall Street. Today, the entrance to the New York Stock Exchange is on Broad Street. Although one side of the building is on Wall Street, the, the, the entrance and the address is actually on Broad Street, yet we refer to it as Wall Street even though it's not on Wall Street. The original theaters in New York City were located all on Broadway. Today, only two or three are on Broadway. Most of them are on the side streets between Broadway and 8th Avenue in Manhattan. 44th, 45th, 46th, 47th Street, they're on the side streets. They're not actually on Broadway, but we still call it Broadway. Babylon is no different. The original location, which was the Tower of Babel and the Babylonian Empire after that, becomes a byword or a metaphor or a general term for the whole institution, for the whole institution of Babylon. Now, Babylon can be etymologically argued having the root confusion. Some linguists dispute that, others agree, leva vel in Hebrew to confuse. And God said, let us confuse their tongue when they built the Tower of Babel. Peter writes from Rome, says it's, it, it, she was in Babylon, greets you. It's not so much the location, it's the institution. Now this is not to say that there will not be a importance to some location at the end of the era where the Antichrist will have his footstool. We are told that he will enter the beautiful land, that is Israel, again, but also symbolic of the church somehow, and it will be between the Mediterranean and Jerusalem. We also told that he will take his seat in the temple of God. We're also told that Pergamum is where Satan's throne is. We're told many things like this. Um, Saddam Hussein tried to actually rebuild Babylon to present himself as the almost reincarnation in the minds of the Iraqi people of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuch King Nebuchadnezzar. Unbelievable. I'm not saying there will not be a reconstruction of Babylon or a prophetic importance 
to Rome. The European Union was founded by the Treaty of Rome, and it's the seat of the papacy, where the Pope is trying and has been trying, the Popes have been trying for the last 35 to 40 years to unite the world's false religions in some kind of a confederation with himself as the bridge builder, the pontiff, meaning bridge builder, as the ancient emperors were. I'm not denying there can be a geographical significance. Many would argue New York is a kind of Babylon because of the UN and so forth. I'm not denying, and in pop culture, Hollywood's been called a kind of Babylon. But mystery Babylon has to do with the world's false religious system in league with its corrupt political system, in league with its corrupt and bankrupt economic system. It is like a three-legged tripod. False religion, corrupt politics, and an out-of-control economy on a global scale. Put them together. This will be the footstool of the Antichrist and the false prophet. The false prophet handling the religious dimension to give power to the other beast. Now again, to examine this further, I would point you to our book, Shadows of the Beast. But remember, many places were called Babylon at different times in history. Luther referred to medieval Catholicism as the Babylonian captivity of the church. It's not just about, or even primarily, about geographical location, although geographical location may come into play prophetically either in Mesopotamia and or in Rome, etc. But it's the institution itself. It all goes back to the rebellion of Nimrod and Semiramis at the Tower of Babel. That is the origin. It begins and ends. It ends as it began. This is Mystery Babylon. God's people will understand it. Now the very fact today that you see a deceiver sent by Satan to mislead the church like Rick Warren with his global peace plan, saying that we should unite with Hindus and Buddhists and Muslims, etc., and Mormons, etc., to bring in global peace. That is the Antichrist agenda. No Christ, no peace. Why will Christians support somebody teaching such obvious deception as Rick Warren? It's a mystery. They can't see it. They don't know what's wrong with it. How can people not see through the ecumenical movement and union with Roman Catholicism? It's a mystery. They can't see it. How can people claiming to be evangelicals get in bed with Mormonism? They can't see it. It's a mystery to them. How can people claiming to be evangelical Christians or saved Christians politically support pro-abortion and pro-same-sex marriage political candidates? They can't see it. It's a mystery to them. But it's not to be a mystery to us. The faithful church will see these things for what they are and understand their prophetic meaning and significance. My name is Jacob Prash. Thank you for your question. <laughs>